more. But that's neither here or there. Welcome to the podcast today. Bah, 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 bah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I y'all. hope you saw me fandangle last week's uh, podcast. Oh, pause, pause. Let's go ahead and introduce it. Oh, and then we can start. I wrapping was giving and you time to get settled. No, go I'm ahead. good. Really? You know, I come ready. Well, you wasn't ready five minutes ago. Just I was looking by- at how beautiful you were on Ugh, camera. Whatever. I was standing behind and watching the, how the glorious this is my wife him. is. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at her. She's so like you had to do that the while Mona, looking at me the Mona the camera. Lisa of but the Love Life Legacy podcast. Every day. You know what? After this podcast, I'm gonna just stand in your face all day. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna be on an annoying kick. I pause. I'm no, just no. gonna be like this all day. <laughs> like you wanna see my beautiful face. I am sorry. Mm-hmm. Let's oh okay. Let's get started as we usually do, because I think I set myself up for failure. With the podcast disclaimer. Yeah. Got it. We desire to share our love, life, and legacy with the hopes that it inspires, compels, and challenges others. That's right. We are all about growth and leveling up, and that is what we aim to do. Mm -hmm. Now, something that we would like everyone to understand is that this podcast is based on our opinions framed from our life's experiences and perspectives. This is not to say that we're right and you're wrong. This is merely to challenge and elevate our lives, your life, and the conversations that surround the topics that we speak on. That's right. Let's get started. Hey, hey, hey. Let's get started. Let's get started. Hey, hey. It's a podcast. Hey. Just that when you move your hands, just don't hit the bottom, please. Okay, I'm trying not to. Okay. Bars. Okay, not bars. (laughs) Yeah, it's bars. Okay, (laughs) but anywho, so last week, Jonathan had to work, so I was left with me and John John to attempt to do a live last week, which Jonathan said I did a good job. You did a good job. Even though his sound wasn't right and all those other technical difficulties. No, the things that actually make the podcast good? That's what you're talking about? I make the podcast good. No, no. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, so yeah. So I was present. Okay, anywho. Jonathan said I could go live without him last week because it wasn't a juicy topic, but because he missed out on it, he still wanted to add his two cents about the home buying process. Well, yeah, I, well, okay. We flow off of each other very well. And I just, I know that you did an amazing job. And, uh, no, absolutely. But no, but I, I, I you know, I, I feel like I could have added. You called me twice during the podcast. And it was, wh- why though? Because of the sound. It was literally only because of the sound. That but was people it. could hear me though. It didn't have to be like tip top perfect. So when I go and edit it. That's uh-huh. when it's going to matter. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you gotta, you gotta trust, you gotta trust this, you know, your the partner. Process. Trust the process. Trust your partner. But I wanted to, I, I wanted to be involved in this conversation. Why? Because home buying is so important to the both of us. We have shared our experience. We ex- we shared ex- our experience with home buying together, and the points that she actually talked about was something that um, I I agree with being there and making mistakes in the beginning, not understanding how real estate really works. So the five points that she gave, we just going to recap because this is going to be we, this might be a short one because we have another topic that we wanted to pivot towards. And I know that more than likely we'll get to that. But let me go ahead and say this in the beginning. So you guys will know next week we will not be joining you all. I know. Yeah, Christ, I'm so sad. I'm so sorry. Um, no, uh, it's for good reason though. We're we're moving finally. You know, we we're going to be closing on our house uh, next week, and um, you know the process is just hectic. So we're going to need 
as many days as we can to really just get our house together. So uh, we're going to free up that time on Sunday that we usually spend with you guys. And we're going to be doing the move to get the house together. So we're going to soak up as much of your time that we can today. Take off next week. And then following week after that, we'll catch up back with you guys. So we're going to recap on this. And then we'll probably hit another topic that we wanted to talk about. Sounds good. Okay. So point number one that you made, babe, what was it? Uh, Try to have a credit score of 760. Credit is so important. It, it, we play around with credit. Um, and it, it's not a game. Two things that I say when I talk to people about finances. I don't play with the IRS and I don't play with credit. I, I don't. Uh, and we share in these sentiments. Uh, in 2008, when we bought our first house, she told you about this the last time. We should have never, you know, got that house. We, she was making... Ten dollars an hour. I was making fifteen dollars an hour. We got proof our house. It was over two hundred thousand. Our credit we was were nineteen and twenty. Nineteen and twenty. Our credit was good. Our credit actually was good. We had like a seven ten something like that. You no, know? you had more. You, yours is at like a seven six. I know, but you were like six something. Mm-mm. No, I, both of us were in the sevens. Oh, yeah. I heard you say that, and I was like, no, both of us were in the sevens. Your score was good because the credit card that came that your mom cut up. And you didn't know she cut it up when I was in college. When you were in college, and that shot your score all the way up. Mine and was in the had, seventies. We had well. already bought cars and all of that too mm-hmm. before then. So yeah. So, but we should we should have never you know gotten it anyways. Okay, yeah, because we don't want to belabor the points. Life happened. We uh we had to foreclose on a house, and that stayed on our credit for seven years. It did. That taught me a valuable lesson. Because I never wanted to struggle again to get approval or financing for something that we needed. Rather, it is the light bill or or the lights getting cut on the house. They have to run a credit check. Rather, you need a car and you can't get approved and you have a high interest rate. Or you have to wait seven years before you actually get approved for real estate again. Yeah. And um, so I made it up in my mind that once we actually got ourselves out of it, and that can be another podcast that we actually just talk about credit, that I wasn't going to play with credit again. And every expense that we had, that we had to eliminate, uh, I checked my credit frequently. People, that's one point that I want to make. People don't check their credit like they need to. Um, Not only do they play around with their credit, but they don't look in on it regularly. Yes, you can get a credit report from freecreditreport.com. But you should be checking on yeah, your credit. Yeah, because you only get one of those a year. You get one of those a year. But you should be checking on your credit at the minimum once a month. I check on my credit report every week. Uh, so I look in on it every week just to see what the changes are, uh, how I can affect change, what I can do on my end, and the whole nine yards. So you should, you, you should at least be checking on your credit at least once a month. And once you look at your credit, see exactly the things that you need to eliminate. I'm giving you some tips and tricks that I use because in our in our relationship, just as a, a disclaimer, I handle the finances by choice, not by force. <laughs> Please back me Please up. Please force me to hand my checks oh my over. <laughs> That's what I said. Please back me up. It's by choice. We found that this is what works best for us. And she trusts me enough to handle the finances. That's facts. Do you have access to everything? I have access to everything. Can you take money out, use it whenever you want to? Yes, honey. Do I ever tell you no, you can't buy something? Do I ever (laughs) tell you no, you can't buy anything? (laughs) No. Exactly. So we have that level of transparency. I'm all the other accounts that I have. She has access to. She can go into the accounts, take okay, out. Honey, you don't have to believe I at have that to. point. Okay, I just come don't, on. I don't want you to look like the woman that you always no. claim that people see you as. People claim to see me as what? But you said, oh, because when, when yeah. I have conversation with certain women, that okay, yeah, boom, yeah, but yeah, I got you. What does that mean? Because I'm not thinking about them right now. I'm trying to get through with the podcast. No, because you're trying to get on to the other thing yes, you want to talk about. Yes, because we already talked Whatever, about Whatever, bro. Okay, well, the, I'll just hit this point and we can move on there. Um, you, you check your credit. You see exactly what it is that you're lacking at. And what I use is, a, is called a snowball effect, a principle, mm-hmm. where you take your lowest um, credit that you owe someone, which by the way, if you used somebody's finances, you owe them that money. If you used it, I've had people ask me if I'm in debt to somebody and it's on my credit, do I technically have to pay it or can I dispute it? No, you owe them the money. 
If you don't pay them, they're going to wait until it's the last moment that it can stay on your credit under their corporation and the, to keep it afresh, they're going to sell it to someone else and it's going to pop up as another inquiry or another deficit on your on your credit report and it's going to look like it's credit. And in your mind, I'm like, no, in your mind, you're saying, hey, this is an old debt. They sell it so they can keep it current, but you owe the money. So you look at all your debts that you owe and you start at the least. And you pay that off. You 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 implement a plan, a strategy. Don't don't go out to eat like you usually do. Don't spend on clothes and shoes like you usually do. Your entertainment has to decrease. You have to be disciplined in this effort. That's true. This is all about home ownership. This is what I want to keep this on. This boils over into other things, but we just want to talk about home ownership. Discipline yourself. Once you find out uh, the strategy that you want to use, you allocate those funds. Um, every month or every check, excuse me, to that small debt. Once that debt is paid off, you then take the money that you would pay that you were paying towards that, and you snowball that lumps that money monthly and, and checkly into the, into next, the debt. next debt, and you do that until all of your debts are paid off. That's something that I did with us. We were just sunk over in debt, and it absolutely works. Mm -hmm. Credit is important. And Shay said that uh, credit checks are even done for appointment. And for certain jobs, your credit has to be, you know, good. I know for my job, yeah. Yes, you you have to. Um, in some instances in, in my in my job, too. Oh, wow. If you want to go up to certain levels of leadership, oh, yeah, your credit has to be good. Because you your, your credit trustworthiness shows who what your character is and that's as a something human being that people miss and that's a really good point um like because before you can have authority over certain people's pay right. and authority to make certain decisions, decisions you know if you're yeah your credit a little sketchy you show to be untrustworthy rather you. you are a trustworthy person or not but they don't know you from a can of paint they just know the person your representative when you come in, you know has you represent yourself when you come into that office or that building so it's like man can i really put this person over knowing that this person make you know eighty thousand and this person making whatever whatever because it's a character issue Exactly. Um, that, that most people don't perceive. Don't, don't think about. Yeah. And the, oh, I'll pay it back later concept, that is what hurts people so much. If you if you took the money and you use the money, you owe the money. Just pay the money. That speaks so much to your character. Like, you know, if, if it's an old debt, you know, most times you can pay little to nothing. You can like pay. This is a strategy I've also used. I was in, we were in debt to Sprint, which I never would do business with them ever again. We were in debt from a technicality based on something that one of their representatives failed to communicate to me and I was penalized by it. Anyways, we owe them $1,200. Fine. I knew I needed to pay it. This is a strategy you can use. I called the creditor. I said, hey, what is the lowest amount that you would take and I will pay it right now? This is a trick I did. They came back they with to to get the manager. Force it. Yeah, they have to put you on hold. They play this whole game, rigmarole. They come back. Well, uh, we'll take, you know, 20% off. I say, you got to do better than that. And they go, oh, let me talk to my manager. They go back and play a little rigmarole. They probably roll. just press pause, <laughs> lay back in their seat, like, let's put them down. <laughs> came back again. Okay, this is our final and best. And this is at the point where I know exactly they're not going to go anywhere under there. If you pay it today, I can get it. We'll, uh, you can pay 475 Bet I will take that deal. This is what I need you to do uh, before I pay. I need an emailed confirmation that I can pay this, and this is all I owe. And after I pay this, that I don't, I'm not in debt to you anymore. And once I get that, then you will get your money. I do not pay. I do not pay them until I get that in writing. Once I have that email, I release the funds. So I actually was, I was able to get that at a sixty percent uh, cut. Because all I did was negotiate. They just want their money. And they're willing to get you from up under them because they have so many other people to deal with. But the point is, if you owe it, you pay it. Be strategic and implement a plan to really knock these down. The snowball effect really does help. Check your credit uh, at least once a month. I check mine weekly and just watch your score go up. The higher your score goes up, the better interest rate that you get. And, and you, less lender, and fees, less that lender fees that you pay. 
It is all about home ownership. It's about changing the traje trajectory of our family based on the lack of generational knowledge and wealth that we weren't given based on our low income and impoverished uh, communities that we came from. Uh, can I answer something right there Go real ahead. quick? Um, I was talking to somebody um, and this person actually has, well, I wasn't talking to them like this. I was chatting with them on Facebook. Um, it's this guy who uh, promotes like uh, duplexes and, and, you know, multifamily homes. He doesn't necessarily believe in, you know, home ownership is in a single family home. Uh, he said that, you know, it's basically a trap, you know, because you have a mortgage, it's not owning the home. And he was just being very derogatory about home ownership. And I was like, yeah, I got his point. You know, you buy a duplex so you can rent out one half and don't pay any mortgage and things like that. Like, I understood his strategy of what he was saying. But the whole thing about sing owning a single family home is supposed to be the long term longevity of it. Mm -hmm. For example, if I do a 15 year mortgage or even a 30 year mortgage and I pay it off early, all that equity of that house, all of that wealth become instantly mine no, yours. for me to do. So if I buy my house at one hundred ninety thousand dollars in this year and in 15 years, my house is worth you know, two hundred and nine. I got a. You extra, flip that for a profit. I have an extra hundred thousand dollars that I made just because I sat here, and I don't get that in a duplex. You yes, don't. somebody is paying my rent every month because you know, because I'm renting it out. But that's not building me wealth. But even even his philosophy well, is skewed. in a certain sense, no. it is because once I you know once I leave that house or I can sell that house and I can make the same amount of profit, but. Most likely, a duplex is not going to be worth as much as a single. But family. even even his philosophy is skewed because that duplex is still under a mortgage of somebody. Yeah, but he was saying because somebody else is paying your mortgage, okay. you're not paying the mortgage. That's that's a great strategy. Yeah, and that that's a great way to come up quickly. If you if you think right, about it, right? But it's not long. -term. It's not long term. It's not long term. Whatever. I would reap like to my wife's point. We would reap more of a profit from a single family than we would a duplex when it comes time for you to sell it to flip. Right. It's all about flipping your profit. Right. So you buy real estate with the understanding that you may not stay there, but it's an investment for the future, so you can flip it for a profit. Any property that we buy leading up to when we get my wife's dream home because it's hers she has she has drew this dream home since we have been what since our first house yeah since our first house and the thing keeps getting bigger it's, and bigger. it's, it's, it's a big one it's a, <laughs> it's a it's a green leaf mansion type if yeah. you're familiar with the show it is. it's huge she keeps uh writing that down but we will buy property up to that point with an investment in mind so any home we buy we say hey we, we've uh, analyzed the market. We've seen the comps. We know exactly what's going to happen maybe within 10 to 15 years in this area. This will be a good time to buy because when we do sell, we definitely will reap the reward when we flip it for a profit. Right. And then that money then becomes something that we can exchange for either another investment or towards our dream home. Mm -hmm. So that's also something that you have to think about as well when you think about home ownership. You, you have the house, you're happy to have a house to hold, call yourself a homeowner, but are you buying to stay or are you buying to flip for a profit? Because you, you have to be forward thinking. We, we, we've, we spent too many years coming from areas where we came from playing catch up. Now we have to be proactive in the case of home ownership. I, you you did your work. You worked on your credit. You you found the right lender. You got the right interest rate. To what gain? Right. Is it going to just say because I can call myself a homeowner, which is fine, or is it going to be, hey, I'm setting myself up for the future? Yeah, but we just had a family member that bought a house on a 15 year mortgage, and they're buying another house, um, basically. For free. I mean, yeah, because, cash. yeah, basically cash because that house, the market flipped since they bought, and that house now is worth a lot more. So they're buying, they're upgrading and buying a, a bigger house, a better house, and they get more for their house, all because they were strategic. Now, back when they first bought the house, I was like, you know, you know, but now it's like, man, I was really smart exactly. to do that because years go by so fast. Fast. Like, you don't think so, but it does. They really do. 
And I, I really wanted to talk okay, more about ahead. this. No, 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 no. no we no, in the vein. Fine. We in the vein. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and also, don't buy outside of what you can really afford. Yeah, we made that mistake. We made that mistake. Well, see, it didn't seem as a mistake because, you know, even though we started out making the 10 and $15 an hour at our young ages, but you did go overseas and make six figures and the house was sustainable. So technically, because it wasn't the money of why we lost the house, it was the bad decision. Our mindset shifted in, you know, because we went into religion and that's how we ended up losing the house. Right. But. You know. Which will all be detailed in the book, Hoodwink, Hoodwinked, Shameless Plug. We're working really hard so we can deliver it to you by the end of the year. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So it's like, yeah, but still be just mindful of, you know, your finances. And yes. It. Because, like, when we first bought our first house, yeah, we had an HOA. We didn't really know about it. It was like we just have to pay these people, like, $500 a year. You know, just the whole upkeep about it, you know, it's not like... You know, when that when that water heater go out, that's your that's your And you would heater. and you wouldn't expect because a lot of the things only come with a certain your home usually comes with a ten year. The home, the structural point point of the home. Yeah. But things like the water heater, like she said, and we bought a brand new house. And we house. bought a brand new house. So it wasn't like it was an old house and HV, we had to fix it up. H V A C unit. Mm-hmm. Your refrigerator, your stove, those things only usually come with a one year manufacturer's warranty. Yep. After that year, you're on the hook for anything that happens to it. And that's why having those other home ins- homeowners insurances, like uh, how we had the insurance do like a uh, home-, home shield, I think it was. I was going to say home shield, but I don't think it is that, you know, it takes care of. Oh, yeah. American home shield. American home shield. That is right. Mm-hmm. You know, on appliances, you pay 40 something dollars a month. A month. And then for every repair, it was like $70 for a technician for to come deductible. Out. Yep. And-, and you have it covered. But those are the things you have to allocate, but that also is a part of your mortgage. So as you're doing the breakdown of your mortgage, you know, you may have done a calculator and it says, you know, you can afford fifteen hundred dollars for a mortgage. But you have to ask yourself if that is that principal insurance, PMI, homeowners insurance, and the you know, HOA. HOA and your home warranty. All those things are monthly part of your mortgage. So you have to make sure that you're not fixated on your interest and your principal, because all those things tie up into it. And you, you have to make sure that at least I know the principal that I told my wife that we use, um, I, I knew what I wanted us to save a month. She told me the number that she wanted us to save. And I was able after going back and forth with numbers, just writing and you writing my and number writing. Was unrealistic. I thought it was unrealistic. And I proved to her that we actually can save that per month. You did? I did. Mm, okay. You remember I said we at least have a check. Nothing that yeah. nothing's going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Monthly. That's cushion. Yeah. You have to make sure that you have that. In case cushion. something go wrong, In because case... that's something that we messed up with First before. House. Like, like for our van, you know, <laughs> I had a little, <laughs> I had a little issue a few weeks ago when I like kind of rolled off the road a little bit. <laughs> A little, little small issue. Everything's okay. Everything's all right. And um, you know, I caught a little damage. And you know, I had to, I had to get four, new, four tires, new tires. You know, whatever. And because we started actually implementing and following our savings plan, you know, we had the money to do it. You know, Facts. normally we was we'll stay so check to check that when emergencies come up, we not have it. And you know, I don't know, but you guys bought an extra four hundred, five hundred dollars for month. tires. Yeah. You know, out the blue like that. It hurts. It stings. Yeah. But these are things as a homeowner, you really do have to um, think about and you have to really consult with your finances about if that is the goal, which I hope with everybody that's watching. And I I wish we had way more on, but that's okay. It's (laughs) not about numbers. The road move. (laughs) Oh, the road move. No, you're right. (laughs) It was the road. (laughs) The road. It wasn't me. (laughs) (laughs) It's really just talking about the importance of home ownership, but there's so many things that we can talk about. And I noticed that our realtor, awesome, um, Kelly she is on Kellen. right now. She is on right now, and I, um, if you're watching right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the put you under the scope right now. It is my hope that the next conversation that we have, we actually can have her on. Because we'll be guest, in our new house. We'll be in our new with house. New space. We'll have the space. Not in our bedroom. Boom. And she can come on. <laughs> From a realtor's point of view yeah. and things that you can do uh, to really strategically align yourself to be ready to buy a home. It's all home ownership is key, man. Did you have one more point? No, I know. Yeah. 
credit, understand the total of your mortgage. Make sure you do the comparables. Oh, and because we're talking about a realtor, make sure you vet your realtor. If you are using a real estate agent, make sure you vet them. Their experience, vet vet the company that they work for, how long they've actually been in business. Get get you know um, somebody who's used them for business. Get their opinion, their review about them. I did homework. I did homework. There was a house down the street um, that I was selling. Oh, you told him last week? Wait, go ahead. Oh, no, no, that's fine. No, because I probably missed something. Go it ahead. was a house down the street that I was looking at, and um, I saw the sign in the in the yard, which is a beautiful sign. One of, that was the first thing I noticed. I'm an aesthetics guy. Um, how much you value your business shows with how much you actually invest in your business. Dang, that was a plug. Okay. So how much you value your business shows based on how much you invest in your business. Their sign, you can actually tell how much they invest it. It was really nice. And I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this house. Because the house, the um, size, um, everything they did to it, the aesthetics of it, the whole nine yards was very comparable to ours. Almost by maybe off by 20 square feet. And I watched it. And I watched how they uh, they showed it. Um, you know, And I watched how long it took to get it sold. And I watched how much they sold it for. Mm-hmm. And I said, whoa, I'm, we may have something here. Mm-hmm. Took a picture of the sign. Made the phone call. When and then I, it came in the mail. Oh, it came. Yeah, it did come in the mail. Um, but I made the phone call. And um, she was the person that answered, even though they were a group. And when I were telling her, hey, I've been watching you guys sell this home down the street. I saw how much you sold it for. I saw a couple other comps in the area. And she was so impressed. She was like, hey, you should be a real estate agent. I was like, funny you said that. I actually went to real estate school. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't finish because it was something that I felt like wasn't right, uh, you know, for the time. And we just created a good, you know, uh, partnership and relationship based on me watching their business and how they worked and how they operated and how she operated as a realtor. And it's important that you vet your realtor. Mm-hmm. You know, if they don't have the experience, they're going to lead you in the best way that they know how, but it may not be the best for you. And you need somebody that has the experience and a company that actually has the experience to help you because it's about you. You're going to be stuck with this home. You're going to be stuck with this mortgage while they moved on to the next client. So how much are they actually willing to invest in making sure that you win is important. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can have her on for the next time. Kelly, if you on. She said she would absolutely love to do that. Boom. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Mm -hmm. I'm yours. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We can move on to the next. Are you sure? I, I like talking okay, about well, stuff like ahead. this. No, then no, 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 it's cool. It's no, cool. cause you look sad. I'm no, 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 I'm not sad. I just, I'm going to save it for I the don't, next I don't even feel right talking about monogamy at this point. <laughs> what Shay say? Huh? Shay say, it's okay to release a realtor to find another that is best suited for oh, you. Oh, thank you for saying that, Shay. Read that again. Shay said, it's okay to release a realtor to find another that's best suited for you. That is why you don't sign any paperwork until you absolutely are sure that that's the realtor you're going to use. Or you can release them like Shay said. That's not true. Really? There is a company that I will not name right now that I know had gotten two people on the hook because they signed Uh, a document stating that that they were going to use their company. And they had they had them under paperwork for a year and they could not go to anywhere, anybody else because they had signed that document already. Mm. So that's why it's so important. Even a class that I took uh, for a company I'm not going to name right now, but they stress the importance of getting that paperwork signed. Of course. You need to get this agreement signed. That's your major. Cause once you have that, you're golden. They're yours. If you're not sure you're going to use them, don't sign anything. And it, and it shows also, you know, to our realtors uh, credibility when they're not as anxious to get you to sign paperwork shows how authentic they really are. When she came to our kitchen table and she had the papers ready and I was watching, she didn't know that I was actually watching this intently, but uh, I Kelly watched. Kelly listen to now, yeah, she boy. Watched, she, she, no, she listen. <laughs> I was watching. She had the papers. She said, you know, hey, you know, so we can go on with business. You got, you know, you guys have to sign. And we were very hesitant. Mm -hmm. And you say, and we said, you know, we're not, we're not sure if we, you know, want to sign right now. So forth and so on. She said, you know, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. Guys, take your time. I'll leave these with you. I'll check back up on you. It wasn't a sales pitch. You know how when you go and you talk to a sleazy sales, a car salesman. 
and they use every word under the sun and they know how to play with words and they try to get you because they they thrive on your business. They right. have to hook you. It wasn't a hook thing. It was, hey, I understand. I'll leave the documents with you. Take your time, look over them, get back to me, and I'll check on you later. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. I was like, oh, yeah. That just spoke to the authenticity of business. Mm -hmm. And because we weren't just a transaction, you really was trying to, she was trying to create a partnership and a relationship, and that's exactly what happened. And we, you know, we we felt good about it. We still had the original papers when we wanted to sign, and she bought new papers <laughs> with her when she came back the other time. But that's also something that you have to check. Uh, make sure that, that you understand the papers before you sign it, and make sure that they they, they won't get you on the hook that they, you can release them at any opportunity if the relationship isn't working out mm -hmm. and your benefit. Yeah, but, Shay said you must. You know, you have to read the fine print. On everything. Yeah, read everything. I, I learned that from, like, from our first home buyer experience, like I said last week, you know, we didn't ask a lot of questions. We were just so excited, you know, at our very young ages, you know, buying a house that we didn't ask a lot. And the things that they were giving to us, which was $8,000, that I thought was a really a gift, but it was tacked on to the back Backside half of, of the, the mortgage. Loan. And, you know, even though I did not have to, we did not have to repay that money back, but that still was an increase in interest money that they were making because Facts. our loan was higher. So we paid, we paid on $8,000 over 30 years, basically. Well, yeah, but because we only lived there for like four years. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about how it was at, at, Yeah, the and the reason why, and Jonathan may have touched on it, but I can't remember why I said, you know, to try to buy with a 760 credit score or higher is not to say that you can't get approved. Some people can approve people at 580 to 580. buy a house. But it's just if you want to make the most out of your money, try to have as a, a high credit score as possible. And I do understand that some people just have to buy right now. They're in a situation or some people just don't mind because whatever their mortgage is going to be is affordable to them. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you're trying to save the most, you know, try to get up towards the six, the 760 mark. You get better rates on your lender fees. I didn't even learn about lender fees. And this is our third her house buy third until house. this 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 time around this time <laughs> and that was because i started shopping around our mortgage for the first time and i realized it was a big game because <laughs> it's a game yeah, bro it's, it's a huge game I'm like who's so factual data when they okay, <laughs> I'm sorry factual I'm sorry. data is a whole nother scenario okay so factual data is used Okay, so when you check your credit on your own with Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, you get you get one version of the score. But then uh, mortgage lenders have an aggregated system called factual data that they like aggregate, you know, to try to get a real like like to get real analytics on like your I guess your repayment capabilities or try to get a, a better score. It's like the black book for the automotive yeah, industry. Yeah, it's like trying to get, you know, your real score. Auto so, industry. Yeah, so when they do that, so that's why, you know, like a situation happened with us, you know, we're seeing credit score that is a lot higher on our end, but then when they do factual data, it's like, well, we got this going. I was like, that's not our scores, but that's how they aggregate it so that they can, you know, make more money. They can on because they didn't take our high scores. No, they that's took nothing. The low scores. They take your lowest scores, they do. And that was another thing. So I'm like, like, you sitting there, I said, I have a 764 as my highest score right now. Uh huh. And you take the lowest score based off of technicality from 2011 and 2013. That was only reported a, to that credit, credit bureau. bureau. Yeah. That's, that's about to drop off in December. Yeah. And it, his low score was like a seven ten. Like so we had to go through all this rigmarole to to for them to recalibrate it. Yeah. To you know, so it was Re like you have to request for a, a rescore. Re yeah, and try to make it seem they did us a favor by paying for the rescore. <laughs> like you know, the real scores are usually for something, but we will take care of it for you. You ain't doing me no favor. You doing me no favor? <laughs> I rather honestly just pay the credit bureaus myself. To actually get it rescored, and that's not something you know. If we had that opportunity, that will work in our benefit. I front the money, pay the credit bureaus for the rescore. They Why would, would see, we pay four hundred dollars for a rescore? Well, because for something that's about to fall off anyway. And just because we would benefit over, nah, for, for the mortgage. Let's do the rescore. We did the rescore. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it only put it only took my my scores up by uh, t two points higher. 
But it's a game. It is a game. It's all a game. It and is. you have to understand that. You have to know exactly what they're using to base your numbers off of. Because it's all a numbers game. And if you don't understand, ask questions. Ask questions. Yeah. Don't just say, I'm happy I'm getting a house. No, you have to know the, the facts through and through, inside and out. Oh, so because our credit scores are good, um, with our mortgage company, so at our closing table... By those few points variances, right? So at first we were getting charged like twelve hundred and ninety five dollars for just a fee for them to originate the mortgage. So with our better credit scores, it went down to seven hundred dollars for them to do the paperwork. And I mean, it's, I was like, so you mean to tell me by our by those little small variance in numbers took away five hundred dollars, like? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like crazy. Like I never realized that the closing cost, the bulk of it, was the lender fee. That's crazy. And then I had three of them, three people that I, three companies I was going back and forth trying to tell me how bad of a deal they were going to do me on the lender fees because the interest rates were basically the same across the company. And I said, so why people always focus on the interest rate? Mm-hmm. Meaning that they get the same scores to give you the same interest rate. So rather who you shop your scores with during that 15 day window, they're going to get the same scores and per whatever the, I don't know what, who based their scores. I don't know, but mm-hmm. everybody has the same information. So therefore you get the same interest rate. Now you can pay more so that you can get a lower interest rate, but the base is the same. It's, it's all the in same. the lender fees. I was like, oh, that's whack. <laughs> but yeah, that's I'm gassed out now. Okay, you gassed out. You I'm sure? ga- yeah, I'm gassed out. Do the work. Become a homeowner. Strategically position yourself to win for the future. It's about life and legacy. We yes. talk about love all the time. Yes. But it is our obligation to also talk about life and doing what you have to do to build a legacy. That's facts. So that is why it's not all about, you know, the, the relationship side. He did this. She did that. Even though we talk about that a lot. But yep. what's the other side of it? And we're about to go back to it yeah. with monogamy really quick. <laughs> <laughs> While we still got a little bit more time. Yeah. So I shared an article in our group today. Before I even go there, right? So y'all listen to this. I don't know about y'all, but there has been a lot more talk about polyamorous relationships, you know, and, you know, that being a new thing and a new cool. It's not new. Actually, um, how do I want to say this? Actually, I think you should start this off, honestly. As a man, uh, men feel as though that their natural instincts... Yeah. Can you explain? Okay. That? All right. Okay. I will. I will do this proudly. Um, as a man, my primal instincts is to is to hunt, is to go after the species that I am the most attracted to. Sometimes I wish it honestly could be food and that would be it, but it's not. Even though I'm a fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> the species that I'm the most attracted to is the opposite sex, which are, which are women. And I have a primal instinct to go after and to hunt because it's more about the conquest and the hunt and the, and the capture. Once I capture, once I quote unquote air air quotations eat, I'm done. (laughs) I get up from the table and I roll on. And I feel like for the most part that's built in us as a programming, um, you know, from, you know, uh, our creator, God, whatever you want to call him. Um, and that's how we usually, by nature act and when you look at it from that perspective and then you try to frame that perspective in the idea of monogamy it can become a little bit confusing all right so according to science us as mammals you know human race are mammals whatever you know monogamy is not natural mm. you know and that's a lot i need of to things. get some drops these are drops some beats or whatever <laughs> so what monogamy <laughs> is really rare in the animal kingdom you know, and over lifescience.com did an article in November of 2006. I started with an old article. I'm going to come to a new one. Um, which, you know, over the 5,000 species that there are, only 3 to 5% actually form lifelong partnerships. Um, so when it comes to us being mammals, meaning that, you know, basically the way that we have children or whatever, um, most of them are not monogamous. <laughs> but... <laughs> So when it comes to analyzing our anatomy and our bodies and things like that, um, we were not always monogamous. So 
Uh, the way that we live our lifestyle now as monogamy has only been around, they're saying, for about a thousand years. Uh, before that, you know, everybody was pro- was basically in polynumerous relationships or whatever. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, so even animals struggle to be faithful. Uh, males, like how Jonathan explained, male animals are hardwired to, sp- to spread their genes because as an animalistic uh, natural instinct is to spread your genes to to lay seed and that's okay for animals you know uh for animals they're trying to you know to live they're hardwired that way they're trying to you know make sure they don't become extinct um it that's just what they do you know they don't have our level of competence and all those type of great things right so another thing that i learned that monogamy is costly you know because it requires an individual or animal uh to place their entire in, uh investment into one mate and that's like uh on the website it said you know putting all truly putting all of your eggs in one basket so because as an animal instinct is for you to spread seed and as a woman the animal instinct is to bear children a lot of animals bear their their kids on a cycle you know you know uh, goats have you know two groups of kids each year because they know that they're just there to bear more goats so it's like so when it comes to us being the creatures that we are we have a natural instinct side and to to, to make sure that we achieve those goals those animals mate with whoever they mate with so that they can get that done so i also learned that there's three types of monogamy there's a sexual monogamy when you only have one partner. Mm-hmm. There's a social monogamy where, you know, you mate in pairs. Sound polyamorous. Call it sounds very polyamorous. And then you have a genetic um, monogamy, which is very hard to explain, and I'm not going to try it, but you guys can Google it, right? So birds are a good example of social monogamy. You know, they have these packs of family or whatever. Wolves are monogamous. But as soon as they mate die or something, they immediately find somebody else to mate with. Um, I just thought it was really interesting when it came back to us as the human race and in us being monogamy and why we, as a culture, for the most part, are monogamous beings now. is because before a thousand years ago, if that's even the accurate number, but I did put the source inside of the group, uh, the Love Life Lexi podcast group, uh, right? But let me pause there. If you're on and you're watching... And you're not a part of the group, please request to become a part of the group, the Love Life Legacy Podcast group, and we will accept you ASAP. Go yes. Ahead. So what I learned was um, humans, we became monogamous. One reason because of STDs. Um, the second reason was because uh, to preserve our families. So did you guys know, right? Hmm. And John just said, don't call them barbaric, but to me, it's very barbaric times where a man and a woman. Right, a man will kill, hmm. will do infanticide, hmm. commit infanticide to kill a woman's child, right, so that he could have sex with her. I thought that was weird. Kill that's a infants. that's a that's a real word. Yeah, infanticide. Infanticide. Kill babies. Infanticide. Yeah, like genocide. Kill generation. Gen, gen, Dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you ask me those questions offline offline next time <laughs> but yeah they would kill the baby to to take the woman and mate with her that is so hilarious. humans got this awesome idea well if I stick with my family I can preserve my family so that's why men became all these awesome protectors because they realized if they let their women and children go out on their own other men are going to come pray after them kill their children, meaning killing off their gene pool and take their woman as captives. That was so depressing to me, Hmm. which I'll go back in a little bit. But so because of STDs and because of preserving their gene pool is why they decided to be monogamous. And that's how we became, um, you know, monogamy became so real because people, your genes was going to get killed because you was running around sleeping with somebody else and then your wife, your woman and children over here are being attacked because another man see an opening. So, wow. thought that was interesting. And monogamy is a marriage system, not a mating system. Yeah, you got to break this down because okay. we were talking about this. I, I was know. Like, that could so, be- for me, the mindset is mon- uh, monogamy is bigger than sex, right? So, for animals, you know... For them, they don't have our intellect. They don't have our, 
you know, let me, I mean, they have it in their own little way. Wait. I can't take it from them that, right. you know, I'm pretty sure a, a gorilla, you know, teaches. My spirit animal, I, I love know, them things. I'm pretty sure they teach their, their baby certain things and the man pours in to, you know, their little gorilla son. I'm pretty sure they're done that way. <laughs> I mean, he probably do, you know. Kerjack, but my dog. I'm bro. <laughs> but, that's my dog. Bro. I'm talking about from Tarzan, but but we understand that the the stable family dynamics of of what you know is the premise of our family and community is having you know a stable household, and we understand the effects of when you don't have a stable household okay. of what happens in families. So it is preserving your legacy when two parents or the man stays in the house right. because if he doesn't the women and children are going to be captured and take elsewhere so you still have no influence on your gene or don't know what happens to your offspring mm. and i think that is very 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 important and us being intellectual beings right. for us not to have thought of that sooner like you really thought it was okay to just mate and lay down with just everybody because you have this instinct that you didn't discipline and then go back to try to check on your first group of kids. Dang, they killing gone. That makes sense as to why I think... Oh, that's out there. Yeah, they watching TV. Okay, they watch TV in the living room. Um, <clears throat> I think that makes sense to why granddaddy or grandfather's grandparents would say, you know... As long as you take care of home. Yeah, because you can't... Cause go out there and do whatever you have to. You better come to, back. But you got to come back. somebody coming to you. And then that that, that that also makes sense, you know, to the running the running joke of Jody. You uh, know, yeah, Jody in, in the bed. You uh -huh. out there doing something, Jody in the bed. Or oh, that's a milkman baby. Yeah. Because the milkman coming through the back door. Because you ain't home. Because you're not home. Yeah. Uh -huh. And those types, of, uh -huh. those types of things. So it's like, so sense. to me and my evolved understanding from just reading these articles this morning <laughs> <laughs> is that I wonder if now, uh, if monogamy is more of a maturity thing. Because it is natural. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I need a no, drop, bro. Because it is natural <laughs> for you men to want to spread your seed. But it takes a level of maturity and discipline to be like, I'm going to preserve my family. I am going to protect, you know, this household. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, restrain me because I understand that these animals you know, or people will become extinct. And that's why more and more animals are evolving also, according to lifescience.com, you know, that animals are becoming more protective right. of their young and having to stay close in order to protect their young. So I just thought that was important. I know. It's very, like... When you said it's a maturity thing. Yeah, it's a maturity thing. It's it like makes I have to sense. deny this part of myself because there's a bigger end in mind. My legacy is important. Right. So it's not about me just wherever I can spread my seed. It's more of, you know, the seed that I have, who is going to protect them? Because there are other men out here that are made, I mean, that are hunters just like me. And if I'm not protecting them, another man is hunting them. And that man is going to kill my baby. And that is so... That spoke so much volumes to me because I, I have friends and families that are in blended families. And sometimes that male that come into the house do not have the interest of those children at heart. Mm. And because that woman is looking to for her to survive, sometimes she ain't even watching after those children in that house. Mm. Because it's a thing. But if the man that laid with her that had those kids were there... She would be more protected and that child would be protected. Mm. How much times have we have seen shows over and over again, actually real stories of a stepdaddy raping the stepdaughter and the mama defending the stepdaddy? Yeah. You know, how many times have we seen where stepfathers come into the house and really uh, just mistreat a son because that son's not his? You know what I'm saying? So even though we may not live it out as in, like infant side coming in to kill your children, but in a way we allow these step parents, you know, these other hunters to come in sometimes and disrupt our family dynamics and mess up another gene pool all because you walked away in your immaturity. Mm. So I think that there is a lot of relevance to it. And the whole point about monogamy is a is a marriage system and not a mating system because it's bigger. If you're gonna mate, mate. 
If you want to be out here laying around, lay around. Right. I understand that there's consequences to that. And I understand that you could produce, you know, because you're mating. Rather, you has a casual sex or trying to have a baby. It's still the action of mating. But monogamy is a marriage thing. It's a protection kind of thing. It's, right. It, it requires more of you. And that's why I thought it was funny when... Uh, when uh, LifeScience.com made a reference that monogamy is costly because it costs you a part of you to do it. You know? Exactly. And I just thought that was just so important. So it's like, so now when I look at different people, right, that have that mindset of, you know, that, you know, just use the excuse that because monogamy isn't natural. I mean, isn't natural. So what? You know? If it requires you to do it, do it. Right. You know, sometimes our natural instinct, we be wanting to kill people that get on our nerves. Right. But, you know, just because it's you not, have a natural emotion to do something doesn't right. mean that you shouldn't, you know, practice it's not, the art and, of and, discipline and to, to, your point, it's to not, restrain yourself. If, if, if you want to, if you want to, uh, talk about how unnatural it is not it's not natural for us to be so programmed that we wake up at four o'clock in the morning and go to the same job and do the same thing and then go to sleep and then wake up all over we have to force ourselves to actually um subject ourselves to that level of programming yeah, because you understand that maturity leads you to a paycheck because you do the discipline thing of getting up your family. because you're trying to take care of the home. Provide. So you do the mature thing of forcing your body every morning to wake yeah. up a, at a time that you don't feel like getting up. Right. Just because you understand from a mature perspective is something you have to do yeah. so that your home is secure. Yeah. And so we're going to talk. Same thing. Exactly. And then we're going to talk about animalistic nature. I don't I don't see the wolf getting up to go to work every day. Mm -mm. I mean, I'm pretty sure he go hunt and grab something, but it's not even the same. So for people to pounce on the fact that it's our natural animalistic instinct, so what? Right. You know, right, 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 we right. not them. You act. They they don't. When you ever see a dog bring money to buy something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they don't have the same level of responsibility yeah, yeah. as we do. But it's still something to hint that scientists are now studying that even the male animals are staying closer to their young because even their instinct, natural instincts are telling them that they're becoming extinct. Right, 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 right. You know, so, I mean, so if an animal who do not have the level of competencies that we do are saying, man, maybe I should hang a little closer to this lady that I laid with. Why aren't, you know, why don't we get that as human beings who are intellectual? You on point, honey. Now, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, so monogamy may not be a natural thing. But it's, it's, it should be necessary if you're going to be having offspring. And that's that's, that's my only point. No, no. You, and it's a good point. And to uh, Shay's question, so is, mahogam so is it a choice to be monogamous? It is a choice. It Just a like choice. marriage is a choice. And that's why CNN.com was saying that monogamy is a marriage system, which is a choice. It is... It is an attitude that you put on. It's a ideal that you adopt. Like, hey, you know, I'm going to... Stay close right. because I understand. Right. You know, but you know, a mate. If you're just mating, then that also is thing. a choice. You yeah. know, is is more natural for you just to. You How y'all girls say it? Do you boo boo? Yeah, <laughs> it's more natural for you, and even us, even females, because you know, if you go across the animal kingdom, some of the females are in certain species are more dominant than the males that they really are. have those types of attitudes too. You know what I'm saying? Like how the lioness actually does the hunting. Yeah, and or, not the the lion. I mean, even in like even as even insects such as wasps, the women are more dominant. Like oh, the, the men don't widow. even fly. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So it's the like husband. Yeah, it's or like certain. Work type of things but i just thought it was crazy yes so yeah when somebody says that monogamy isn't natural and they go to their home bring them all to justify polygamy and all that stuff cool if that's for them but if you require protection if you require that one-on-one -on -one attention if you require to be set safe in that way that requires monogamy I need an organ. then you should get that <laughs> because some because uh, <laughs> I, I was in one of these group <laughs> chats right and it was basically saying that Insecure women, I'm going to call myself an insecure woman like okay. me, uh, have issues with, uh, uh, because I'm insecure, I can't, sh I don't share him. Oh I'm my like, oh God. my God. No, I know who I am. And that's why I'm not going to share him. But I mean, so I just, it's just so many different ideologies out there, you know, and I just really want to hold on the point. Just because something is natural does not mean that you should do it. <laughs>
know, so, so I naturally sneeze. So should I just sneeze everywhere and sneeze on other people? Yeah, Look and you sneeze on other and, and you sneeze <laughs> You sneezing on other people shows how secure you are that and their the, their immunity and your yes. immunity will actually See, you know fight. Every, it sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. And the, I mean, I, I hate that idea, bro. I hate that your security is predicated on the fact that you don't allow other people. To invade your thought yeah. process, Secure your space, woman your could share and bro, let her man go out, bro, or whatever. Bro, I'm like, but those same, I have seen several times, and I saw the divorce court before one time too. Um, it was this polyamorous marriage or whatever, but the man, he couldn't take any of that on his woman, and I'm like, so why is it okay for a man to say us women that requires monogamy are insecure, but he can't? handle his woman having somebody else in the same manner how we can cheat all day long but as soon as y'all cheat what that man did that man cry and pass out (laughs) pass out flip the car over can't do can't function mentally you break down it is because again we are strong physically outside but emotionally, we are so fragile. It's called the fragile male ego. Ignore that, please. I keep see you keep looking at it. Oh, the time? Yeah, just, keep, just ignore it. Okay. Let's, let's flow. Because um, we ain't going to be here tomorrow, next week for them. Okay. So we are so strong and we like to appear strong and we like to show our muscles off or how aggressive we can be and how we don't take no mess off of nobody else. But as soon as the same wrong that we would do to somebody else is done to us, mm-hmm. we can't handle it. We become weak. We become, you know, insustainable. We we break down and we show how weak we really are emotionally because we are not built up inside how we are on the outside. So a woman can go out. We expect a woman to actually be strong enough to take all of our stuff when we dish out. But you dare not better do it to me. Yeah, and where are you and speaking I, from? And I, it's a personal place. Yes, I'm speaking from a personal place. I told her if she would ever go out... And this is something I literally said. You ever go out, you do your thing outside of our bedroom, do not tell me. Mm-hmm. Because I would... I, and I what would, I tell you? I don't remember. I tell you, I would tell you. Yeah. And I said I would die. <laughs> oh, and one other point I that I die. wanted to say about this whole monogamy thing. So some uh, cultures and other... Uh, uh, I don't know what name I wrote because my my handwriting a little sketchy right here. But um, it said that uh, I'm some glad you know it. I know, right? So some of those people believe that STDs are a punishment for being in polyamorous relationships because it's is it's like the world protecting itself from. I mean, our species as a punishment, you know, to get us to do right by being monogamous. Damn. I thought that was funny. But when you think about that is, it, there are consequences is, to our s- actions. And when, so it's like, so is it natural? Or is it not natural? You know, is it, is it natural because it's there and it's that desire, but then the world has a little check balance that if, if you mix all of these vaginal secretions with these other things going on, you're going to get a disease. <laughs> so maybe you should only have one. Uh, I'm, I'm having an immature moment right now, <laughs> but it was funny as heck when you said vaginal secretions. I'm, I'm sorry. That bodily, is hilarious. Okay, sorry. Bodily fluids. <laughs> well, maybe it was. So I need when to grow up. I'm sorry. all these bodily fluids together. <laughs> vaginal secretions. You know, but then us being innovative, we came up with condoms, you know, right. so that we could keep doing what we're doing without the consequence. You right. know, so it's like. You know, whatever. Now, again, we're, we're, again to draw the separation, uh-huh. the separation is mating, which she just described, is totally different From than monogamy. monogamy in marriage. Mm-hmm. And that is also how people, because you brought up that point, I hate how, and we, we spoke on this before, I hate how people conflate long-term relationships with marriage. With marriage. That's not the same. Man, get out of here, bro. Marriage has a bigger commitment, and I think that's also why people would prefer to stay in long-term relationships and wait to commit to marriage. But then you have some people that run into marriage too. So I really think it's just subjective to it's the individual. It's subjective to the individual. Yeah. But the goal is, you know, we, we would love for healthy communities and healthy relationships to be built from a standpoint of monogamy, i.e. marriage. Because you can strengthen a home. Um, you can strengthen mentally yourself by you finding a partner that is in tune and in, and in spirit and in focus with you 
uh, and that can be done personally and from we saw from uh, other people in the confinements of a monogamous marital relationship. Mm -hmm. And then um, I didn't uh, write down the facts from this article or whatever, but uh, there are statistics out there, and I forgive me for not writing it down, that people that are in monogam monogamous re marital relationships uh, live longer, live healthier lives than people that are in polyamorous relationships. And that should be a natural understanding. Standing. Because number one, like, I stress Jonathan enough by myself. <laughs> you, know? you just came out of a little dilemma. For me stressing him. But what I'm saying is, it's just, it's you only can have a certain amount of people that you have emotional space for in those close quarters before, you know, just added stress, just, just dealing with, you know, relationships and re dealing with people that you really can't give a hundred percent of yourself to more than one person. You can't so, because, so when, or, but if you try, that's when you deplete spiritually yourself mm -hmm. of your energy. And that is what shortens your lifespan. Yeah. People don't understand that the amount of people that they take on and their problems, their baggage, and then they're trying to fulfill a void in their life by giving to them. They're depleting them of their energy, which takes off the days and years off of your life. But even so, even then, even from the whole uh, polyamorous point of it, even from single people, when you're in a monogamous relationship, you live longer and more healthier. Mm. So that's so that just goes to show you the the level of companionship, companionship. that's needed. That's good. Um, versus you know, rather you're single or having multiple, it's still you get something more with that one on one. That's good. You know what I'm saying? So that's good. I thought that was good. So that was it. See, look at you. Preaching. I need an organ. <laughs> I did not need an organ. But I thought that was good. That so was really good. So basically in a nutshell, monogamy is a marriage system, not a mating system. There it is. And uh, we have evolved as creatures. As, there you go. As, as is the human race to understand that monogamy provides safety and provides legacy and longevity of our offspring. Uh, we do understand that it protects us from STDs. There you go. And we understand that, you know, we just, we need, we have to have the discipline necessary and understand it's going to cost us personally to be monogamous and to, you know, Facts. just have a family. But well, one of these days, I'm going to discipline you to stay in front of this mic. Me and you going to have know, a problem. I don't know. I'm always like fighting <laughs> with the okay. mic. It's okay. You can't fight the mic. You still sound really good, babe. Okay, it's just okay. how I am. I'm particular. So that's it. I see you guys don't have any comments unless no, I we miss had something. Some. We, had, we had some. You know, Charmaine, appreciate the love. She said she loved the podcast. Oh, agree, Deep, agree. I agree. She said, girl, preach. Charmaine said, wow. Yeah, we appreciate yes. the love. And um, just while we're at this point, if you're still on, please share this podcast. Share, 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 share. You got to do a home buying 101 part and then do the Part. Well, I'm not gonna cut it up because it's gonna be shared from the live. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But in the title, it is it, it uh, it's home buying 101 and okay. monogamy. Fun facts about monogamy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So please share, 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 share. Like, like, like. The like. more the more exposure we get, uh, fuels Facebook's analytics. So it's you know and and it controls how many people actually see the video. We have and I have a huge vision. For this podcast. So, uh, we're just trying to do, you know, oh, baby steps towards it. Tierra, but, um, oh, sorry, honey. Tierra said, yeah. so true, my home value went up almost 10000 in nearly a year. Boom, y'all. Fact. It's, oh, facts. Take us back on a rant. But that's really good. That's really good, cousin. Uh, yeah. It's just, it, it, I ain't going to go back on a rant. But like <laughs> I was saying, please share, 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 yes. share. Yes. Uh, so, the analytics can drive people to view and then we get more exposure, which means we build an audience and this can become more than just a weekend thing. It will become something that we do as a profession. A profession? Yeah. Oh, wow. People doing well you off podcasts. You got plans, honey. I'm fine I got you. big plans. Huh? I'm with you. Dun, dun. <laughs> But you guys enjoy your Sunday. Hey, y'all enjoy y'all Sunday. We Thank appreciate y'all staying in on. with us with the Love Life Legacy podcast. podcast. It's a Love Life Legacy podcast. Oh. And I, hold up. I disconnected. I always said that I wanted us to play the music as we go out. Oh. Let's see if I can get it right this time. All right. Y'all be easy.
Did, did I, I can't get it right. It is uh, clean. All right, hold on. Hold on. Further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. Hey. Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. Hey. <laughs> you can't even hear you. you got your headphones on. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. Hey. We love y'all. Peace.